Hello everyone, welcome to Korea Learning session number 17 on family tables. And I'm Trisha from Product Labs. Have you ever wondered that what is family table? Well, we can define family table as a collection of parts or assemblies which are similar but deviate slightly in some aspect, such as size or included features. Let us think about an example. Everybody must have seen set of socket wrenches. It's a very good example of the family table because geometry of all the sockets remains same but height, diameter, and drive size changes. So what do we do if we need to model entire set of socket? Well, we do not need to model all the sockets individually. Instead, we can model just one, and by the help of family table, we can vary the driving parameters like height, diameter, and drive size. So it becomes much easier. Stay tuned to explore more on family table in the next couple of minutes. To learn about part family table, let us consider a sheet metal part model. Using family table, we can show various instances of a part or assembly. In this model, we'll show four different instances which will be based on different dimensions and shape of the part. This includes flat pattern of the part as well. So, let us click on the button labeled as family table in the top menu bar. A pop-up window appears. Click on this button to insert a new instance of the part. We'll click four times to insert four different instances. All the newly added instances are appearing in the displayed table. Let us rename them now for ease of understanding. We'll rename one of the instance as flat pattern as we are going to show flat pattern as well. Remaining ones can be renamed as you wish. Likewise, rename all the parameters displayed under the column called as common name. Now, click on the button highlighted here. This is for addition or deletion of table columns. A new window appears. Using this window, we can define the instance with its feature and dimensions which have to be called out in the family table. For example, consider this whole dimension as a selection parameter for instances. Since we are going to choose dimension as a parameter, make sure that dimension radio button is selected here. Now, select the dimension of the whole. Identifier of this dimension is D22, which appears under the items list in the pop-up window. Now, click on OK button to proceed. Again, we get back to previous table, but now D22 dimension appears as a defining parameter in a new column. In this column, we can enter different values of dimensions D22 for each instance listed in first column. Now, Again, click on the Add Delete column button. Now, we'll be making whole as a variable for each instance. Whole is extrude to feature. So, first, let us change the radio button selection to features. A small pop-up window appears for selection. Now, select the extrude to feature from model tree. We can see that the feature extrude 2 appears under the items list in the pop-up window. Now, click on done in the menu manager pop-up window and click OK in the main window. Again, we get back to old window with another new column which is for extrude feature we just selected. Now, we can include or exclude this feature from the instances listed in first column. And this can be done by choosing Y or N in the drop-down menu of each cell. If in some of the cases, we want these parameters to remain unchanged, we need to select star as input in the respective cell. Now, 
click on add delete column button once again. This time select the length of this part as next variable by selecting it. Length dimension identifier is D0. Now click on OK button once again. We will repeat the previous steps for this parameter as well to have it included or excluded from any particular instance. Now we are done with editing the variables. So next step is to verify these instances by clicking on verify button. Another small pop-up window appears. Click on verify button here. You can notice that all the instances have been verified successfully. Now close the window. Now we can preview the instance by selecting the instance followed by a click on preview button. Also, we can choose to open any instance by selecting it and then clicking on open button. We can measure the dimensions we made as variable. Now, close this window and add flat pattern feature as a variable. For that, first create the flat pattern of this part by clicking on the button labeled as flat pattern in the top menu. And then open family table by clicking on family table button. Here in this pop-up window, we'll once again add one more parameter which is flat pattern feature. It can be done by clicking on add delete column button. Now select the option feature here and select flat pattern feature from model tree. And close the window. Now you can see that a new column has been added. For this feature select Y or N appropriately. Only the last instance should have Y. Since we have added a new instance in the table, we need to verify it once again. Now close the window. Let us open family table once again and preview flat pattern instance from there to check if things are okay. We can open this instance in a separate window as well. So this is the end of the session on family table at part level. Thank you. Now we'll learn to create assembly family table. Assembly family table concept is same as what we learned in the part family table. In the assembly family table, we'll be able to include or exclude the part itself from assembly instead of part features or part dimensions. So first, let us create an assembly using some of the parts we have in our database. Name the file as assembly family table. Switch on all the planes. Now click on assembly button to assemble the parts. First, We'll open the sheet metal part we just did while learning about part family table. When we select to open, it asks about the instance we want to open. It's happening because this part has multiple instances we created earlier. We'll go with generic 1 which means the usual normal configuration of the part. We'll fix this part and open another part called switch and assemble the rail with switch in a normal way of assembly. We'll apply appropriate assembly constraints to fix the parts with respect to each other.
Now, click on OK button to finish the assembly. Press Ctrl plus D to fit the model into screen. Now, we'll create a linear pattern of the switch along the mounting rail. We'll have three instances of pattern with a pitch of 36 mm. Now, click on OK button to finish the pattern. This is the final assembly ready for assembly family table. Let us measure the width of switch and the gap between two switches. It would be needed later during creation of family table. Now click on the family table button in the menu bar at the top. Family table window appears. Add the three instances into table by clicking on this button. Rename the instances in the first column and common name in the second column. You can give any name of your choice. Now click on the Add Delete column button. Now we'll be selecting the number of pattern instances as a variable for family table. So we have to ensure that Dimension Radio button is on here. So click on the pattern and select the number of components which is identified by P4. Now click on OK button. Here in this window, we can define the value of P4 for each instance which is nothing but number of switches. Now click here to verify the instances. In the pop-up window, click on verify button. Instance number 1 should consist only one switch because value of P4 is 1 for this instance. Let us verify this by clicking on preview button. Here in the preview window, we can see that only one switch is there. Similarly, other two instances can also be verified where switches should be 2 and 3 respectively. Now, we will add one more column in this table to add another variable parameter for family table. Using this parameter, we'll be able to control the length of mounting rail. So, let us click on this button to add the column. Remember that mounting rail is different instances already defined for different lengths. We did this in part family table. So, We'll be using those instances to control the length in this assembly. This time item selection should be component because we'll select sheet metal part as variable. Sheet metal component name appears in the list after selection. Click on OK button now. Now we'll be filling out the instance number in each cell of the new column. Each instance is having unique length. Let us verify the instances now. In order to check the length of mounting rail in each assembly instance, let us preview them one by one. So this is the first assembly instance with the rail length of 36 mm as per mounting rail instance number 01. Similarly, we can check the length of mounting rail in other two assembly instances as well. It should be 72 mm and 108 mm respectively. Now, we can verify all the instances before we save. We can close the main window now. Repaint the model. And click on Ctrl plus D to refit the model into screen. With this, we have completed the session on family table. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can find us on social media. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.